So I know that I'm always complaining about how cold it is, and that's true. It is cold. It's a whole thing. But I also forgot once I got past the whole, I don't like the rain and it came too soon and it's too frequent this year problems. I also forgot how much I love sweaters. And I love sweaters. I love sweater weather. And so for that reason, this is like the best time of the year because it's sweaters galore. You can't not wear a comfy, beautiful, soft, cozy sweater. So that's what I'm doing today. It doesn't have anything to do with the pour. I mean, it kind of does because the pour is blue and I picked those colors for a reason. So I guess it's all kind of coming together. So I'll go with that. I'll tell you what today's pour is in just a minute. But before I do, hello, I am Mrs. Soap and Clay. Let's make stuff. How's it going, Sudzers? Welcome back to the channel. You are at Soap and Clay, where we make all the soapy things, and you are here for day 149 of 365 days of soap, and today we are continuing on with the sister pairing in the royal line, and we are tackling Princess Margaret. And she's awesome. She's like, and like all versions of her are awesome, like the real version of her, the version that Helena Bonham Carter, I think, plays in the crown of her. She seemed like a lot of fun, for sure. And I also feel really bad for her. She's like the whole, in a field of roses, you're the wildflower, right? And she just, anyway, so I really wanted to capture her kind of fun-loving spirit because as far as royals go, apparently she was a gigantic party animal because she liked to smoke and drink. So the scent of this one is Cognac and Cubans, and it's delightful, it's absolutely amazing. And the color palette that I selected was a series of blues, really rich royal blues, lighter blue, because in all of the pictures that I've ever seen of Princess Margaret, she always looks so stunning when she's wearing blue. And so that's why I wanted to do this. So let's get to the pour. We will talk more about Princess Margaret and the pour and all of the things there. Okay, so Princess Margaret's bar, and as I just said, it is scented with cognac and Cubans uh, because she was a little bit of a, a party girl for the royals, I guess. Isn't that funny how, you know, Princess Margaret was considered the wild child party girl because they had no idea that Prince Harry was coming? You know? I mean, that's interesting. Anyway, the, and also neither one of them are like big, like they haven't had anything crazy. They never have. Never have done. Anyway, Cognac and Cubans and uh, the blues because every picture that I've ever seen her in, when she is wearing blue, she looks absolutely stunning. So I wanted to do blue. Shot myself in the foot because after this, I uh, looked up Queen Elizabeth's favorite color and it's freaking blue. So I don't know what I'm doing tomorrow. We'll find out then. Anyway, Princess Margaret. Princess Margaret is kind of a sad case. I really feel bad for her, right? Because like her and Queen Elizabeth both, right? They, they, they were from, they were daughters of the second son in the line. And so by all accounts, their life should be pretty freaking perfect, right? Privileged as shit, lots of money, going to get good educations, but really not have to do a whole lot except not make waves and make the royal family look bad. So 
it's a pretty all right life, I guess. It depends on your version of all right. Because I still, I, I that whole, like a gilded cage, I don't, I don't like that. That's all, I, all royalty, I think. Yes, I mean, as far as money goes, kind of an easy life. But as far as the rest of it, it would be hard to not have the freedoms that I get to experience. Like, for sure. So, I mean, I'm not like, oh, wow, I feel bad for the for the royals. I'm just saying maybe they're, maybe their plight's harder than we just, you know, assume. Anyway, Princess Margaret, the second daughter of the second son, and then all of a sudden, their uncle abdicates to marry a, like a Nazi sympathizer, so that's freaking crazy. The royals are wild. And um, now she becomes second in line to the throne behind her sister, Elizabeth. Everybody's life changes overnight. Now the spotlight is more on you than ever. And now you have to perform in a different way, in a different capacity with kind of harsher rules and consequences. And that sucks. Now in the crown, I think they sort of alluded to at least once, if not kind of a main focus, um, Margaret really thinking that she was the one that was better suited to be queen, right? And I couldn't actually find anything that suggested that. I have read lots of historical accounts of both of these women and watched lots of documentaries and all the things. I can't find anything that actually really does support that claim. So I don't know. I don't know. Um, I honestly think that she basically was just fine with not being in charge but she wanted to be in charge of her own life. And unfortunately, she was unable to do that. Like Peter Townsend, who I guess she started having an affair with when she was, you know, a young or a, an old teenager. Um, and he was a lot older than her. She wasn't allowed to marry him. And she had to get permission from the queen, from her sister, to get married to really anyone. Because that's just how that weirdness works. I mean, maybe somebody can under, can explain to me why that's even a thing. Why can't you just marry whoever? Anyway, and at that time, since Peter Townsend was divorced, was a divorcee, uh, the crown could not, could not allow that marriage. So she didn't marry Peter Townsend. Um, and it was sort of sad and that sucks. And she found this photographer guy, Anthony, right? And the stuff that's kind of portrayed in the crown, I think is reasonably accurate as far as the Antony relationship goes. They they were pretty caustic with each other. They had a couple kids. It was, you know, whatever. He was given a knight sum or a duke sum or an earl sum. He was given some sort of sum, you know, a, a, a title. Hang on so nobody freaks out on me. What was he given? I don't know, guys. I had it up. It's not here anymore. Anthony Jones. I don't know. Why am I... I could have just paused this and looked it up. I was prepared. My phone turned off. And I'm not going to find it anywhere. Wait. Earl. Earl. Earl of Snowden. There you go. Sorry. That took a while. Anyway, they, they ended up fighting a lot. They were kind of not good for each other, kind of a toxic relationship. And they both openly had affairs and public affairs. And she was very much the socialite and all of the things. But she always really did have a very fierce passion and love for, you know, her children, her family and everything. But I think she maintained a not insignificant amount of resentment because she was unable to really live her own life. And whenever she was trying to find her own life and love or whatever, the entire world was looking at her at that point. Because at that point, I mean, this is like, you know, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, right? Like, we are more global at that point. We can all see the things. By the way, I'm doing a three layer bar and this middle layer is nice and swirly swirly. It's kind of like, well, actually we haven't done 
a bar quite like this in a while. So it would have to be something from year one content to reference. And I don't remember. But yeah, no, like people actually watched her at this point. And she was traveling to New York and doing things and um, living the party life. And any time that she ever did, people had opinions. And I guess one of her affairs just went too far for the public eye. I mean, it's all just going to continue to be a running theme with this whole sister series thing that we're doing. And the idea of, you know, like slut shaming. Because basically, effectively, we also, not like we personally or whatever, but public opinion in all major player countries didn't like that Princess Margaret was, you know, having affairs with men that were younger than her and all of this. And it's like, that's just... <sighs> Whatever. I mean, unless the people were, like, underage or there was a stuff... Let people live their lives, you know? Let, let people do what they want behind closed doors. And even if they're royalty, you know? Whatever. People are allowed to... And we do this all the time with those sorts of figures, like the Bush twins, for example. I don't know that they did anything that were too t that was too terribly scandalous and crazy, you know, by any measurable standard, right? But one of them, one if not both, but one of them, she got a lot of heat. She got a lot of flack. And it's like even now when we see Meghan Markle marrying, you know, Prince Harry or whatever... She was scrutinized like crazy. She was a tabloid figure in the headlines all the time for just being, I mean, just being her, just living. And she wasn't even living a crazy life. She just, well, I have opinions as to why she was more he heavily criticized and has been more heavily criticized. And, you know, she talks about that in the Oprah thing. And I think maybe she's not wrong. Anyway, um, I don't think that it's fair that we do this to any woman ever and especially and we see it really apparently in like the celebrities and I guess royals are considered celebrities for you know a United States audience I don't exactly know how they're seen in the UK like are they celebrities for you guys they're certainly not rulers you know what I mean that's like an honorary it they don't really control anything right now do they it's just a stability thing Anyway, point is, I don't think we should be so critical of, you know, people in general, uh, but not, you know, women either, just for doing something like, you know, wanting to go out and have a drink or, you know, have sex in cars with boys or girls. Give a shit. Why, why do we spend so much time invested on this? Like, and sadly, that's one of the only really concrete things that we know about Princess Margaret and how completely screwed up is that? Like, how screwed up is that? That this is all we know of her, you know? I mean, it's not all, all, obviously, but this is the majority of what we know of her, and that doesn't make any kind of sense to me. Like, she just passed away, like what, like 20 years ago? So the majority of her life was lived in a time where it's not hard to find information or to document information. And really all we know about her is the party girl socialite kid sister of Elizabeth II. That's not cool. How would you like it if your whole life was boiled down to that? And, you know, I think some people actually do argue that that's basically all she was because that was just her role and everybody sort of wonders what it is that British royalty does anyway. But... Even if, like, she didn't have to go out and do a job and do whatever, she was still a mom, right? She was still a daughter. She was still a sister. She could have her own philanthropic goals and desires and dreams and whatever. But you have to dig deep to find any of that. What we know of her is, you know, again, like I just said, the crazy partying socialite kid sister of Elizabeth II. And that, you know, really sucks. Okay, so on to the cut. And as I said, um, this is a three-layer bar. This has been sea-pumped and gelled. And again, cognac and Cubans for this guy. 
delightful blend, by the way. Love that one so much. But yeah, no, Princess Margaret. It's very sad. Oh, and actually earlier also, I did want to just go ahead and clarify because I did say something earlier that might suggest that these kids were really well educated. They had access to the best education afforded, you know, whatever, as royals. But their mama really did not super educate them. And Queen Elizabeth actually tried to make up for that by self-educating and getting tutors and doing all the things while she was queen, really, and learned a whole bunch of language. We're not talking about Queen Elizabeth. We are talking about Princess Margaret. And that bar is beautiful. Isn't that bar gorgeous? That bar actually reminds me of my, this beautiful dress that my grandmother used to wear all of the time, which is actually pretty fitting because it's about the same age as Princess Margaret. Um, yeah, that's a gorgeous bar of soap for sure. I, I'm digging that. And I will probably stick with this same design for Queen Elizabeth's bar as well. But yeah, no, Princess Margaret. Speaking of Queen Elizabeth and, you know, back to that or whatever, but still Princess Margaret. In like February of 2002, Princess Margaret died. I think from, I want to say it was a lung cancer thing. She had part of her lung removed. She was a heavy smoker. All of the jazz. Anyway, she died in February of 2002, and it was like three days after the anniversary of her father's death, and then like six weeks later, uh, her mother died, and she was like 101, her mom, Elizabeth and, and Margaret's mom, and it was crazy, so like just thinking uh, about Elizabeth at that point, it's 2002, she's with us 20 years later, and she lost effectively the anniversary of her entire original immediate family exists in like a six week time period. And that's super sad. But, and also it had to have been sad for Margaret and Elizabeth's mom to put a child in the ground because that's terrible. No mother ever wants to uh, live long enough to no, no parent ever wants to outlive their, their mother, really, or their child. You know what I mean? God damn. I'm sorry. I'm focused on the bars while I'm trying to talk about something that's very big and important because death is not fun and it's very sad, but that's Princess Margaret. She was known as a rebel. She was known as the party girl. She was, you know, scandalous and all the jazz. And sadly, that's mostly everything that we get from her. She had a kind of interesting interview in like 1995, I want to say. But even then, they still focused on, even in that interview, they still focused a lot on, you know, how does it feel to be dubbed the party girl? It's like, dude, she's like 75 years old at that point. She wasn't 75, maybe 65. She was old. And they're still focusing on that. And that's kind of sad. Anyway, that is uh, day 149, uh, Princess Margaret. Tell me that bar isn't just stunning. All of the different blues and the... <sighs> I love it. I love it. And I love the scent blend with all of it too. The bar itself is very bright and fun to look at. It's visually appealing. But then the scent has this very earthy really pulls you down into a more serious nature and I think that's fitting for Princess Margaret. I really do. And so I am happy to have made this and I hope you guys, you know, enjoy it as much as I do because I really enjoyed the shit out of this pour. It was a delight. And uh, that actually means something a little bit exciting. The next bar in this line is Queen Elizabeth the second year two, the queen and that means that the entire six set of the sister ship, it'll all be done. And so that's tomorrow. Sad to see it go, but I really do appreciate everyone for having indulged me and my desire to talk about, you know, Elizabethan English royal history through all of this. Because it's been fun. And I've really... Really had a good time doing all that. You guys, again, definitely go check out the Absolute History YouTube and watch the series yourself. It's very interesting. They presented sides to all six of these women that, while I am very well educated on all six of these women, or as best you can be, cases like Mary Boleyn, not a lot of info, but I've seen them from historical accounts 
to accounts in dramatic settings, movies, shows, etc., books, fictional accounts, and um, this was even a new one for me, and I enjoyed it a lot, so go check out that series. If you're interested in seeing what Queen Elizabeth's bar looks like, we'll come back tomorrow. Sudzers, thank you for having been with me for this. I hope you guys had an excellent time. You are awesome for letting me do this series and just being a part of it. I appreciate you guys so much. I'm out of here for today, but I will see you guys all again tomorrow for another round of royally soapy fun. Bye.